in verse 15, he says, Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise people. Make the most of your time during your stay on the earth, because the days around you are evil. So then and do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. Make the most of your time on the earth by understanding what the will of God is and serving Him. Three commands He gives us. Number one, walk carefully. Don't just walk and take a walk in the park and just, just enjoy walking with God. That's what He's saying. Walk wisely. Number two, He says, make the most of your time on the earth. Buy up opportunities to serve the Lord. Understand what the will of God is and then serve Him. Don't just serve yourself. Find out what God wants and do it. The third command He gives us is, and do not get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and making a melody with your with your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. And be submitted to one another in the reverence of Jesus. Wives, be submitted to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is of the head of the church. He himself being the Savior of the body. In verse 25, husbands, love your wives. Love your wives, just as Christ also loved his church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. In chapter 6, verse 5, employees, be obedient to those who are your employers, masters, bosses, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in the sincerity of your heart. As to Christ, in verse 10, finally be strong in the Lord in the strength of his might. And put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces in the wicked, in, in the heavenly places. In verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And with all prayer, pray always in the Holy Spirit. I want to show you the Holy Spirit is involved in every one of these ministries. Every one of these things. You can't do this without the power of the Holy Spirit. In verse 19, and pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known the boldness of the mystery of the gospel. Heavenly Father, we pray today that we would give us real ears to hear and understand that we would impart something today, this morning, to us that really is from heaven, teaching us, preaching, and encouraging us to live spirit-filled lives, to be a spiritful church. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to think about this. This morning, one of the most fundamental principles, one of the most fundamental principles that a Christian can ever learn, and listen to me carefully because this is an awesome message, one of the most fundamental principles that a Christian can learn is to live in the filling of the Holy Spirit. How to live, how to walk, how to minister, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? Now listen carefully. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said to his disciples, he said, you shall receive power and then you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the most parts of the world. I think we had an amazing conference. I really think we did. It was a spirit-filled conference. It really was. The, everything about our conference was awesome. It was The preaching was awesome. The worship was awesome. Come on, give the Lord a hand. The worship was awesome. Praise the 
the team, and everyone there, who's, who is spirit, that's what I call spirit-filled worship, spirit-filled preaching, spirit-filled love. We were loving each other. Spirit-filled fellowship. Spirit-filled. Every single thing was awesome. We didn't have to speak in tongues. We just had a spirit-filled conference. That's the real spirit-filling. Uh, and we just enjoyed what, growing in the Lord and experiencing Him. I went back after the missions, missions night, and the next morning on, on, on Sunday morning, God gave me this verse, and I, I loved it. Uh, listen to what this verse says. In Isaiah 44, verse 3 and 5, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon your offspring, and I will bless your descendants, and they will grow up among you like poplar trees, among the grass, like poplar trees. I will pour out water on a thirsty land, and you will drink of it. And your children will grow up like poplar trees among the grass. And some of them will say, uh, they will say, I belong to the Lord. Another one will say, they will call upon the name of Jesus. Another will say, it will write in his heart, and write on his hand, belonging to the Lord. You know what? That's what I thought of the conference. In the conference, we had people, it was amazing. The night of the missions night, a past, pastors, people were coming up here, and I won't mention names, but a pastor came up to me for prayer, and he just wept and wept and wept. And he said, God taught me so much in this conference. And he said, I need more patience. And by the way, this man was, is a great man of God. He's an awesome man of God. And I know this man, and, he, and it wasn't that he needed more. It was, it, he was just, God had moved so powerfully, so powerfully in his life at the conference that he was just being sensitive to what God was saying. I loved it when our young people came. Three of them came up, and there was many more that came up, touched and said, Pastor, and one of them, Abimanio, just broke and He says, Lord, I want to give my life to you. It was an amazing conference. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will take from me, and He will not glorify Himself, but He will speak of me, and He will bring glory to me. I think in the conference we experienced that, the telescopic ministry of the Holy Spirit, where Jesus was magnified, and we sensed Jesus coming near to us. We experienced the telephonic ministry of the Holy Spirit in our prayer times before services as we prayed for the fields, and we could sense God speaking to us, the Holy Spirit speaking to us of what Jesus wanted us to pray for. It was beautiful. And I have an have a, have a understanding that I cannot live this Christian life apart from the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit in my life to give me power. And many times as Christians, we try to live this life without the filling of the Holy Spirit, and God says you can't do it. I read a little illustration this week, and it was from Adrian Rogers, and listen to what he said. He said, imagine somebody buying a car. Now just for a moment, picture somebody buying, in the villages, buying a car. A new nano comes out. And this farmer decides to buy it, and he has no idea how to operate the car. He just gets the car, it looks nice, he wants the car, so he picks up his car. He's only been used to riding uh, ox carts. So he brings the car, and he doesn't know the car has an engine in it. Now that sounds stupid, I'm just using an illustration. So he brings the car, and he brings all his family and all his friends, and he says, Can, do you see the car? It's beautiful. It's got a fantastic paint job. It's sleek. Look at the seats and the dashboard and the driving. Everything's wonderful. The only problem is he doesn't know the car is supposed to operate on fuel and an engine. And so the problem is he does something very strange. Everywhere he goes, he pushes the car. And the people in the, in the village think it's really strange. He's bought this beautiful new car, but everywhere he goes, he's kind of pushing the car. Just pushes it, pushes it, pushes it. And he kind of like, it's very hard for him. And he's wondering, why is this car so wonderful? It's kind of very tiring. 
And so once in a while he comes to a place where he has to go downhill, so he sits in the car and it takes him downhill and he's kind of very happy about it. But every time he goes downhill, he remembers, oh goodness, now I've got to go uphill again. <laughs> and he goes around wondering, he says, you know, I love this car, it's a nice car to have, it's a nice status to have. The only problem is, it's turned out to be more of a burden to me than a blessing. And then one day somebody comes to him and says, this is how you use the car. You see this key? It's the ignition key. You put the ignition key in, in, in the ignition and you turn it. And the car comes to life. And then you take your foot and put it on the accelerator and you put the pedal in and suddenly the car starts. You move the car in gear and the car starts to move. And this guy gets the hang of the car and he goes, oh my gosh, this is incredible. He's riding down the, in the village's roads in the farm and everybody's looking at him. He goes, wow, this is amazing. And he goes, hey, why didn't somebody tell me about this before? That is exactly what it's like with a Christian who doesn't know to walk in the Holy Spirit. You see, a lot of Christians think that I come to church and I gotta keep all these laws and rules and commandments. I gotta go to church, I gotta I gotta learn to worship properly, I gotta I gotta love my wife, I gotta I gotta witness, but they don't realize that none of these things can be done without the power of the Holy Spirit. And God, when we got saved, placed the Holy Spirit inside of me. And He wants me to live only under the filling of the Holy Spirit in my life. I love Romans 8, verses 3 to 4. Listen to what it says. It says, uh, for, for the law of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, has freed us from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as we were in the flesh, Christ did. The law, we could not fulfill the law. We could not keep the commandments. We're not able to keep God's requirements on our own. But Jesus came and did it. In order that the requirements of the law may be fulfilled, not in those who walk according to the flesh, but those who walk according to the power of the Holy Spirit. And what that simply means is when a believer learns to be Spirit-filled, when I learn to walk in the Holy Spirit's filling and receive His power, the Holy Spirit now begins to carry me. And I love it when it, when it says, we begin to go to church, and it's fun. You go to church because I learn the Word of God. I go to church because I want to worship, and I want to draw near to God. I go to church because I, I go to church because I will learn how to love my family better. I will learn how to minister to my children better. Our relationships get better. Every single thing. I, I, keeping the word is not a, a problem. In 1 John 5, 3, it says, And those who love God, he, they keep His commandments, and the commandments are not a burden for them. They love keeping the commandments of the Lord. Why? Because the Holy Spirit does it. Are you following me? It's a beautiful thing. Our children will grow up among us like poplar trees. And they will say, God, I want to follow you. I want to serve you. The power of the Holy Spirit. Now, how can I be filled with the Holy Spirit? What does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Some people think, like I said last week, I stand and I say, Lord, fill me, fill me, fill me. That's not what it means. Paul makes it very clear, to be filled with the Holy Spirit means to be filled with a person. He says, if we live in the Spirit, Galatians 5.25, let us also what? walk by the Holy Spirit. So please remember again, the Holy Spirit is not a force to fill you with a good feeling. He fills you as a person. He wants to walk inside of you. What does it mean to walk inside of you? The Holy Spirit, I love this statement. It says, the Holy Spirit is resident but he wants to become president. He lives inside of you. Now here is God living inside of you. He came inside of you. Imagine if, what does it mean to walk with Jesus? It means that Jesus, you take instructions from Jesus. To walk by the Spirit means that I'm listening to the Holy Spirit as he instructs me, as he illuminates me, as I read the Bible, the Holy Spirit will give me a word. He says, here's my word for you. Here's my promise for you. This is the way walk in it. And if I'm sensitive to the Holy Spirit, 
I will be spirit directed. I will be spirit led. It's not hard. If I told you that Jesus lives inside of you and you were to walk by Jesus, you would be conscious of Jesus and you would say, Jesus does live inside of me. I'm going to live and walk by Jesus. So I've listened to what Jesus wants me to do. But the whole Jesus does live inside of you. He lives inside of you by His Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. And that Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And when I live my life to Him, now what does it mean to be controlled by the Holy Spirit or filled? It does not mean, as I said, I stand and I say, fill me, fill me, fill me. That's wrong. Get it out of your mind. To be filled with the Holy Spirit means to give Him full control of my life. Full surrender of my life. Should you pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit? You can. You're not commanded to. But one of the things you could say, because Jesus does say 11, John, uh, Luke 11 verse 13, He said, If you know to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father not give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Now we don't go around saying, Holy Spirit, please come into me, because the Holy Spirit's already inside of you. But we do can say something like this. We are conscious. And in my life, I often say, just to be touching base with the Lord, I say, Holy Spirit, lead me. Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, control me. I want you to live through me. That's the first step. The second step that we should do if we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and this is a very important step, we must give our lives completely to Him. You see, when the Holy Spirit came to live inside of you, He's like a divine guest inside of you, God living inside of you. And when He comes to live inside of you, <clears throat> He wants access to your whole life. He doesn't want just some parts of it. Now, if you are living in the Holy Spirit, He wants to take the control of your life. He wants to... He wants to, I love when we go to Malika Chup's home, we were doing a Bible study. There's a beautiful picture of Jesus on a, on, on a boat, and he's on the, uh, of a little kid uh, with their hands on the boat, and Jesus is behind putting their hands on them, guiding them. It's a beautiful picture. When you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, it's like he has put his hand upon you, and he is whispering in your ear, turn left, do this, say this. Don't look there. Don't live in sin. Surrender your life to me. Give that up. And to allow the Holy Spirit to live inside of me and fill me, I need to surrender my life. Now I want to ask you a question. In your life tonight, are there any areas in your life that you're not giving to God? Financial problems? Dealing is the way you deal. Sexual problems. The things you watch. Areas of my personal life. God wants to clear it. Because in that moment when you are living in sin, the Holy Spirit at that moment is not controlling you. For that hour it may not control you. And what a sad thing to want sin more than I want the power of God. I love Pastor Charlotte's message. Why, how can we have the good hand of the Lord, the recipe for success? How can we have the good hand of the Lord upon us? If we surrender our lives to God. But sometimes people want their sin more than they want the grace of God. They say, God, I want you, but I want my sin more. And sin is more than, than loving God. They never experience the power of Jesus in their lives. But we surrender it we can experience the power of God in our lives. So we need to surrender that. And when we do, we begin to experience some amazing results in our lives. The Holy Spirit begins to guide us and lead us, and we sense the power of God and the purpose of God. We begin to sense love, joy, peace. We begin to sense praise. I'll tell you, you, you say, how do I know when you're spirit-filled? Can I give you a couple of things? Number one, you will have amazing praise in your heart when you're spirit-filled. It will come naturally. When you are spirit-filled, I love what it says, the first sign of it. It says in Ephesians chapter 5, and let, let's learn the scriptures here. It says in, in verse, verse 18, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then verse 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns 
and spiritual songs, singing and making a melody with your heart to the Lord. You know, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's awesome. You, you know it. You've experienced it. He fills you. And suddenly you become this very joyful kind of attitude, awesome attitude. You start to magnify God. You say, Lord, thank you. You are filling me. You go to the office and you're whistling and you're singing a, a beautiful hymn and a song to Him. You begin to say, you find yourself walking on the street and you just keep saying, Lord, I love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you've done in my life. You begin to sing worship songs. You go to church and the Holy Spirit just takes over you because you are still filled with the Holy Spirit and you really experience God's presence. And you kind of have this, this amazing joy of uh, this, this amazing life of praise and adoration for Jesus Christ. And it's a love that comes inside of you because your body becomes a temple of praise to God and it overflows and He pours His love inside of your heart. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, everyone can know because you're just happy and joyful. You're not grumpy and mumpy and grumbly. Uh, it, it says next, next, next way, we know that you're filled with the Holy Spirit at that particular point of time. And by the way, we're not always filled with the Holy Spirit, but we should be. We desire to be. We're not always that way, but we need to. We need to know what it looks like and, and how it tastes like. But in, in verse... Um, 20 it says always giving thanks for all things in the name of our God our Father in the name even in the name of our Lord Jesus even the Father when you start when you're filled with the Holy Spirit you begin to have be greatly related to God and be greatly related to the circumstances around you hey do you know something in this life you won't have all your circumstances go right the way you think it should go but when you're filled with the Holy Spirit you begin to see God in it if you have woken up in the morning and you say, God, you filled me, you are leading me, then it doesn't matter what your circumstances are going to be like. Because you're so happy, because you know that God is steering your life. And He will even take the bad circumstances, even the terrible looking circumstances, and He will turn it together for good. Because He's God. And so you start to give thanks, not sometimes, but you give thanks always for everything. Praise God. Somebody said, we don't become great, we don't become grumbly hateful, we become humbly grateful. We start to walk humbly, we begin to realize in our lives, you see, every single thing has come from God. It's, 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 the full, it's, it's the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit in my life. We have a great attitude. Another thing I love about spiritual believers, the next verse says in verse 22, Verse 21, be and be submitted to one another in the reverence of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I'm spirit filled and when you're spirit filled, you know what will happen in your heart? You will have an amazing spirit of submission one to another in the body of Christ. In the fear of Jesus, you will say, brother, sister, I just want God's will in this situation. I'm submitted to God. I'm submitted to the Holy Spirit. And we submit one to another. We say in the reverence of God because we begin to realize uh, we, we, we become a team player. We become adjusted with one another. We can, we can work together and not have friction. Because the Holy Spirit is filling me. It's a beautiful thing to be filled with the power of God. So be filled with the Holy Spirit. So be filled with the Holy Spirit, says Paul. He's exhorting us, encouraging us. And then we, we hear about, in verse 22, how the Holy Spirit affects our lives. And number one, listen to it. It's kind of beautiful. We spoke before the conference. The Holy Spirit will help our lives in worship, remember? We said when you come to church, you won't just be yawning around and distracted. When the Holy Spirit fills you, you will be singing from your heart and praising the Lord. And it will be an experience for you, a great encounter with Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit, you come to church and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will teach you something. He will take the deep things of God and He will speak to you. Things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard. And that which has not entered in the heart of man. He will search the scriptures and He will give you something that God has prepared for you. Two things. But here's a third thing. The 
the Holy Spirit will help you if you're spirit filled. And Paul is going on, and we want to look at some things here and see how it relates to the Holy Spirit. Wives, be submitted to your own husbands as to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved his church. Wives, the Holy Spirit can help you in your marriage. By the way, submission is not because you are inferior. <coughs> submission, somebody said once, submission is one equal person placing themselves under another equal person so that God may be glorified. Did you hear me? You are equal. You're a partner. Wives don't submit to your husbands because you're less intelligent than them. I think maybe many times you're more intelligent. But submit because it's God's plan for your life. And so a wife places themselves under her husband. It's very important. Jesus placed himself under his father, even though his father and him were equal. Because God will be glorified. But a wife cannot submit unless she learns to be spirit-filled. Unless every morning she goes to God and says, God, lead me and guide me and fill me. I want to glorify you. Husbands, love your wives. Oh, we all know. Love your wives. Agape love. The word, a beautiful word for God's own love. Love your wives with God's love. The love that the Bible says agape is kind, is patient, is not self-centered, is sacrificial, does not keep a record. And we all know that in our own, we can't keep this love. By the way, can I say something tonight? God wants you to honor the wife you're married to. He wants. The Bible says, be faithful to the wife of your youth. Be faithful to the wife of your youth. Don't go looking around. It doesn't bring glory to God. One day you'll stand before Jesus Christ and you'll be happy that you follow God's instructions. The Bible says if you go and if you, if you live unfaithfully to God, it's like taking fire in your bosom and you're going to get burned. And an adulteress and a person can woo you and guide you and take you far away from God. But can I say something? That adulteress is, is, is someone who's evil and in the end they'll leave you destitute and you'll find out you don't have a family. So serve the Lord. Draw close to God. After you become a believer, give your life to Jesus and say, I'm not playing with fire anymore. But the Holy Spirit can fill you and give you a brand new love for your wife and for your children. But I can't, and in our own strength we can't, because in our own we can't love every single time kindly and patiently. But that's why when a husband is filled with the Holy Spirit, he's filled with Jesus himself, the, the husband begins to love his wife with God's love. And Jesus in me can love my wife. Jesus in me can love my wife. So I'm filled with the Holy Spirit and I have praise in my home. I have peace in my home. I experience joy in submitting one to another. You know what happens in an average home? It's so beautiful. The wife knows her role, but she loves her husband, and sometimes she'll share something with him. And if he's a spiritual man, he doesn't take it as a slight. He, doesn't, he just says, thank you, honey. Thank you for sharing with me. I needed that. I needed that. Thank you. But she knows her place, and she knows that she wants to glorify God. And her attitude is one of great submission. She wants to help her partner. We all know that. We've experienced that. Submit one to another because you're spirit-filled. But then wives understand you have a special role. When I'm spirit-filled, there's a second thing that happens. It affects my workplace. Employees, be submitted to your own, obedient to your own employers. According to the flesh, with fear and trembling in the sincerity of your heart. As unto the Lord. 
from the Lord you will receive a reward. You need to treat your boss well. Wherever you go, I don't care. If you're a Christian, your boss needs to, needs to have honor and respect. And when you're spirit-filled, you can. You say, you don't know my boss, Pastor. You don't know what kind of a guy he is. He just, hey, he's a crazy guy. It doesn't matter. If you live, you work in that company, then that company is a testimony. You are a testimony in that company of people who get to know Jesus. And your boss must be so happy, so happy that you were working in that company, so happy that they would say, hey, you know what? When they call the employment agency, they would say to them, hey, do you have any more Christians? Can you send some more Christians over? These guys are amazing. I don't know what they listen to on Sunday morning, but they are awesome. They go to work on time. They never steal. Do you know how much money is stolen from companies today? Paper pads, pens, and all kinds of stuff. Literally millions and millions of rupees are stolen every week from companies because employees just take it home, that which doesn't belong to them. But a Christian never does it. A Christian doesn't gossip. A Christian honors as unto the Lord. And your boss should say, I don't know what's wrong with this person. But, but I love these kind of people. They are just awesome. They don't gossip. They don't waste their time. They work hard. They're efficient. They try to do everything first class. And they, I love the way they respect and honor me. I want some more of these Christians. You know what will happen when you start to live in the call centers and the BPOs in, in your office and your boss and you start to live like that? People will say, I want to know, what do you do on Sundays? How do you spend your weekends? John Thomas shared, was living out his Christian life in, in, in the BPO and Plaquila was there and Plaquila got, came to know the Lord. She was already a Christian but she said, I want to go to the church you're going to. And she came and Plaquila came and she brought her mom and then her dad and they're all in church now. Then the other day Plaquila was witnessing and Richie and Anita come, came to the camp and they, they got saved. And You know what's amazing? When we start to live, we begin to have a testimony in the office spirit filled and the Holy Spirit can help you in how you listen to the word he can help you in how you worship that's important he can help you in your family in your marriage but he can also help you in your workplace there's one more thing that I want to say before we close the Holy Spirit will help you in warfare you know that you don't you don't you don't have a natural life the Bible says we wrestle against principalities and powers as Christians, we sometimes have attacks against our lives. Amen? Do you know anything about it? Of course you do. Sometimes the attacks come against our lives, and it's not our work employees. It's not the people in the, in the office. It's not our boss. It's not our in-laws. None of that. It's just because the devil would like to wear us out. And sometimes he uses unsaved people or he uses carnal believers that are not spirit filled and he uses their tongues to say something about you but I want you to remember something your boss is not the enemy the devil is your boss is only a prisoner of the enemy he needs to be prayed for People around you need to be prayed for. You need to realize that sometimes your life will come under attack. And a spirit-filled believer will know when he's under attack. Because the Holy Spirit will tell him, this is not flesh and blood. This is not flesh and blood. You need to get on your knees and start praying. So Paul is speaking about this in relation to the spirit filling. He starts this passage here. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but princes and powers and demons sometimes. Then he says, put on the whole armor of God. And then he goes to the whole armor of God, the spiritual armor of God, which is put on Jesus. But he gives you the full armor. He says, gird your loins with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. That means know that you're righteous. Put on the helmet of salvation. Know that you're eternally secure. And then take on, put on the, uh, uh, take on the shield of faith that you can quench the fiery darts of the enemy. And then he goes on, put on the, put on the gospel of peace so that you're short for the preparation of the gospel to preach the gospel. And then he says something else. And above all, in addition, 
take out the soul of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And in all things, in all times, in all things, pray, pray with all perseverance and petitions for all saints. Pray. He was saying this, sometimes your life will go through attacks in your life. And you know what you need to do? You need to be walking with God all the time. The armor on, the armor on, the armor on. You go to bed, the armor's on. You go to sleep, the armor's on. Spiritually, you're walking with God. You have truth in your, in, in, in your mind. You, you know your armor. And when the Holy when the enemy comes in through a person, you just take out the whole the sword of the Spirit, not to cut the person off. <laughs> but you take out the sword of the Spirit, which is a rima. The Holy Spirit will say, say this to that person. Love that person with this verse. Use this truth to a principle to share with that person. And it's the sword of the Holy Spirit out of the Word of God. And you use it and the devil flees. But you can't do it unless you are learning to pray for people in the Holy Spirit. You're in the office and someone says something to you. Instead of reacting and responding, realize that that person themselves is going through warfare. Or you are going through warfare. And instead of responding and reacting, just say, Holy Spirit, help me to minister that person. And I pray by the Holy Spirit for that person. And I, I pray for them. And then you know what I do, Lord? I take up the whole the, the, a word in season and I give it to that person. <laughs> Can I say something in closing? We can't meet supernatural attacks with natural resources. But praise God, he that is greater that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit is inside of me. And I can live through the Holy Spirit. And I can walk through the Holy Spirit. One more thing. The Holy Spirit helps me in witnessing. Paul said, I pray that you would give me utterance. To speak boldly the word of God. He says, open my mouth. And how many times do we need the Holy Spirit to do that? So many times we feel like we're around unsaved people. And we need to speak to the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit, we just feel like our mouths are shut. But Paul says, you can witness by me. Be witnesses for me. Open your mouth and speak. Ask the Holy Spirit for boldness. And he will give it to you. So be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve Him. Don't grieve Him by saying something that's unnecessary. Don't grieve Him by ministering something that's unedifying. Don't resist the Holy Spirit by not obeying Him. Don't quench the Holy Spirit by when you hear the Word of God, you careless about it and you don't listen to it properly. Don't quench the Holy Spirit, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled, and when you're filled, you'll be filled with His love and His wisdom and His joy and His patience. And you will walk, in, and He will direct you, and you will say, Praise God, be filled, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled for your wedded life. Be filled for your witnessing. Be filled for your warfare. Be filled for, for receiving the Word. Be filled when you worship. Be filled by the Holy Spirit. And you know what? God says, I will do some great things. I will teach you. You will have power in your life to live the Christian life and you will keep His commandments and you will have fun serving God because the Holy Spirit has filled you. <coughs> Amen. God bless you. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Thank Him for praise Him. Everything we need for every detail of life in Ephesians 5 and 6, God gives us as we allow Him to use the precious Holy Spirit in our lives. Friends, just be conscious that God has given you the greatest thing, the Spirit of Jesus to come and live inside of you. Be conscious of who you belong to. Be conscious of who lives inside of you. Be conscious that He wants to live and walk through you. Be conscious every moment that He has a purpose and a plan for every moment and every hour. Be conscious that if I follow Him and I don't resist Him, my life will be controlled by Him and filled by Him. And I will experience love and joy and power and its direction, purpose and wisdom to speak. Be conscious 
Don't walk into office and be natural in your conversations. Don't go into, into ministry just without asking for his control on your life. Just every message we preach, everything we say, oh God, help us to be filled with your Holy Spirit. Oh God, help us to be powerful men and women of God. Oh, help us to be a spiritual church, God. Help us, even when people rub us on the wrong way, Lord, to be submitted and adjusting and praise in our hearts and loving you and walking with you, God. We thank you tonight. We praise you for the Spirit-filled life, the Spirit-walking life, the Spirit-led life, God. We thank you to this morning. There's somebody here this morning and you Maybe you're attending our church for the first time, or maybe you've come many times before. But I want to give you, I want to give you an invitation today to accept Jesus into your life as your personal Savior, as your personal Lord and Savior. Maybe you know all about Him. Maybe you, you've grown up a Christian. But I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ personally? Do you know that He paid for you on the cross, that He died for you on the cross, that He paid for your sins? Do you know that if you believe upon Him and His sacrifice, you can go to heaven and be forgiven your sins? Before you go out of this, this hall tonight, you can receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Accept Him as your Savior. Just say the simple prayer, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Save me. Forgive me my sins. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. Not once, but every moment and every day and every hour. I want to be a spirit-filled Christian. I want to live with the power of the Holy Spirit. So thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.